great apes as a commodity. Isolated, abused, traumatized, an everyday occurrence in Guinea. This baby chimp is just one of more than a hundred that have left West Africa illegally in recent years. For every captured young, up to 10 adult chimps lose their lives. Karl Aman has been fighting the international animal mafia for a long time. The environmental activist wants to put a stop to illegal trade and get back as many apes as possible to Africa. But his opponents are powerful. There's a lot of money in criminal dealings with threatened animals. 20 billion US dollars. That's the estimated global turnover of the illegal trade in endangered animals. Such trade shouldn't exist at all because it is forbidden by CITES, the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species. 178 member states ratified the treaty. Many haven't bothered to incorporate it into national law. This has been going on for years, in Guinea, West Africa, for example. Chaos, political instability and corruption reign in this country. An ideal situation for criminal animal traders. Chimps and gorillas are particularly sought after in Asia. The Swiss nature photographer and environmental activist Karl Amann wants to put an end to this trade. He has taken us with him on the trail of the ape traders. Nan Yuki at the foot of Mount Kenya has been Karl Aman's chosen home for the past 25 years. The 64-year-old works as an animal photographer and writer. But he's made a name for himself internationally as an environmental activist. His commitment is focused on the increasing exploitation of nature, illegal animal trade and poaching. Pictures like these in front of his veranda are becoming rarer and rarer in Africa. Karl Aman is uncompromising when it comes to protecting animals. His motivation has a name, Mzi. Twenty years ago, Karl Aman saved the chimp from the clutches of animal traders when it was just a baby. Its parents were poached, their meat sold on the market. Something in my eye, Missy. On the spur of the moment, Karl Aman bought the ape for less than five euros. <laughs> It was a decision that was to change his life. Today, Mzi lives in the garden behind the house. For Karl Aman, he became the living symbol of his fight against criminal animal dealers. The demand is great. The illegal market is constantly growing. The Washington Convention, known for short as CITES, prohibits all trade with apes caught in the wild. Karl Aman is trekking down the dealers in Guinea. For years, they've been exporting chimps to China, more than a hundred in the last three years alone. Allegedly, they were all bred in captivity. In other words, they wouldn't be illegally poached animals. As Mr. Alex, Karl Aman built up an internet platform. He claimed he wanted to import apes for a safari park in Asia. Lots of males were exchanged with dealers in Guinea. They all offered him chimps, some even offered gorillas. Greater Johannesburg, with a population of more than four million, it's the most important urban center in Southern Africa. It's a place where all kinds of animals get sold on. Karl Aman wants to plant a potential buyer undercover in the network of animal dealers. 
white South Africans are regulars in Guinea. They don't arouse suspicion there. Julian Rademeyer is the right man for the job. He knows his way around hidden cameras. He's just published a book about the illegal trade in rhino horns. Representing Amman's alias Mr. Alex, he will travel to the animal dealers in Guinea. Guinea is one of the poorest countries in the world. The state is dilapidated, the political structures unstable, everyday life in the capital Conakry is determined by corruption and chaos. It's an ideal place to get at forged permits, the official papers for animal exports. Many of the officials will take bribes. Kal Aman is still hoping to get clarity about the ape experts to the Far East from the Wildlife Conservation Agency. Up until now, lots of animals have been smuggled via Guinea because it was just so much easier to get at these permits. All the dealers were offering these permits. The question is, what's going on now? Because those permits were fake and so the importing country should realize that and then the trade should stop. Karl Amann is following a clue from 2010. He was given forged documents. Eight chimps were exported to China at the time. Allegedly, they were all legal captivity bred animals. Ansumane Dumboya, the responsible CITES official, openly tells Karl Amann that the papers are forged. Is that your signature? Although it's his signature, others had issued the permits. It's chaotic here, and his hands were tied. He claims to be a victim of the circumstances. In addition, there are influential people who want his job. In a country like Guinea, 90% of the administration is all over the place. Sites isn't a priority. And he says the political will isn't there. It's not all his fault because he doesn't even have the permits. They're with someone else. It's chaos. Monsieur Dumbuya makes out he's completely innocent. Karl Amann doesn't believe him. Julian Rademeyer, meanwhile, is making preparations for his first encounter with the dealers. They're expecting him and they're cautious. Okay. Nevertheless, they openly talk about how the chimp trade works. No, no, he will not check. He will not check. I will tell him that I need sightings of monkey, but I will send the chimp as monkey. Okay. This is the problem. If you tell him that his monkey there is chimp, he will charge you more, more money. Because he, he wants money every time. Who is the sightings of fish His name is Dumbuya. Dumbuya. Dumbuya, yes. It would seem that it's precisely the man who is responsible for species protection that's also the one in caboots with the animal traders. Dumboya allegedly gets around 3,000 US dollars for one chimp permit. Rademeyer will get to see the apes tomorrow. While Rademeyer is working undercover, Aman is on his way to see animal dealers operating officially. He wants to ask them about the export of the eight chimps to China. The meeting's been arranged by the man who claims to be innocent, Monsieur Dumboya. Mamadi Sidibi is one of the big names in the animal trade. Until 2006, he mainly sold birds. Then the European Union stopped imports because of bird flu. The market collapsed. Aman is convinced that the dealers moved to more lucrative animals, including apes. ZDB and his colleagues allegedly don't know anything about the baby chimps for China. But just the previous day, the same CDB told the potential buyer, Julian Rademeyer, how easy it was to get at official export permits for chimps. Evidently, the animal traders and the CITES officials are putting on an act for Karl Amann. The deals don't always seem to be above board. Karl Amann receives word from Julian Rademeyer. His most recent meeting with the traders was successful. The proof Karl Amann has wanted for so long. Two baby chimps in a backyard. 
Everything suggests they've been caught illegally from the wild. So tell him I'm going to send these pictures to Mr. Alex yeah. um, and then we'll come back to him about this. The traders say there are even more chimps for Mr. Alex outside of town. <laughs> Their network reaches from Mali to Cameroon and the Ivory Coast to the Congo. Quiet, okay? Stay there. There. Okay. It's like your baby. <laughs> Chimps are still being exported from Guinea to the Far East and the authorities are evidently significantly involved in the deals. The problem is the one we predicted. There are chimps for sale. Nothing has changed. And if nothing happens and the two are exported again, then that means we're not getting anywhere. That we don't have the capacity to do anything. Things will only change when there's no demand anymore in China. Karl Amann is setting off on a journey through the People's Republic. He's in search of those eight chimps that were exported to China in 2010 and should never have been allowed into the country because the papers were faked. Zhuangzhou, not far from Hong Kong, a population of 13 million, a booming industry, two zoos. It can be proved that 130 baby chimps have been imported into China in recent years officially for breeding purposes, but the reality is different. The very first stop opens the eyes of Karl Amann and his interpreter, Nancy. It's mainly about profits. You know, this is out of control with these imports of chimpanzees here. Entering the arena costs extra, quite a bit extra. Separating the show and the zoo is standard in China. Young chimps are primarily one thing here, a lucrative business. According to the CIT statues, the commercial use of wild-caught chimps is strictly prohibited. Same city, different zoo. Karl Amann makes a discovery. The two chimps in their treehouse have very different facial features. They could be from different countries, from Central Africa or East Africa maybe. They seem to be illegal wild-caught chimps, not captivity-bred animals. But Karl Amann can't prove his suspicion. These two were allegedly born here, but that's very unlikely. We're going to see the mothers in a minute, and then we'll find out whether there even are two mothers. These two are the same age. They would have been born at the same time, and the mothers would have been pregnant at the same time. It's highly unlikely. Their cousins, hardly any older and allegedly also from West Africa, are working hard in the show. In the back of the park, Karl Amann discovers the fate that still awaits the participants in the ape theater. This is the final stop for the old apes. They just sit in loveless enclosures, often all alone, until they die. And that can take a while. A chimp lives for 50 to 60 years. Karl Amann never finds the alleged mothers of the two young chimps. The next stop on his trip is the safari park in Shangzhou. Loud, upbeat music greets visitors, but the conditions are sobering. Chimps in solitary confinement. This is a male. It's still got energy and life in its eyes. It wants to play and engage in grooming. 
It's bored all alone in the cage here. There are four cages and four individual chimps. I think that's criminal. It intuitively tries to make contact. You would love to groom. I know you would love to groom and I would love to groom you. But it's very hard. There's a bloody glass in between us. Go and see for your friends. You have to see your friends. I'd go in with him. But Karl Amann can't find its friends in Zhangzhou, the eight chimps with the forged permits. Instead, he finds an isolated young chimp. The zookeepers would like to improve the conditions, but they don't know what's good for chimps. The management evidently seems to care mostly about money. <laughs> Karl Amann wants to know from the zookeepers where he can find other animals. They take him to the training area behind the arena. Solitary confinement for chimpanzees. Without social contacts, these young animals suffer tremendously. The traumatized animals lust after contact, even through wire mesh. Their training is their only distraction. It's kick, kickboxing. <laughs> Karl Amann manages to collect some faecal matter without attracting attention. He later sends it to Europe for a DNA analysis. That's the only way he can prove what country the chimps are from and whether they're illegal wild-caught chimps as he believes. The capital, Beijing, is the headquarters of the government and all the country's authorities, including the ministry responsible for species protection. Karl Amann wants to talk with those responsible, but he only manages to get to the gate. We had the names of different people who we wanted to ask different questions, but that doesn't seem to be possible. Nancy asked whether we could have an appointment, but we're not allowed in without an official invitation, and we can't get one, so we won't get any answers. But Karl Amann doesn't give up that quickly. The whereabouts of the eight chimps still remain unclear. The next port of call is the Science Department of the Species Protection Ministry. The young woman seems embarrassed. The papers from Guinea contain so many errors that the Chinese authorities never should have accepted them. But those responsible aren't available for interview. The Wu makes this decision. Either he's a very bad official or he's a very corrupt official. That's the origin. The results of the fecal sample have come back. A specialist from New York is to evaluate the DNA analysis. The primatologist Esteban Samiento. His verdict is very clear. All right, so um, to have some control where it is that the chimps are being taken. I mean, you, you just can't have an export permit that says Guinea and you go ahead and take chimps from every place. There are three different subspecies of chimps in Africa. Depending on where they're from, their appearance is enough to tell them apart. But this was a pretty good one here and here. Can you see the mass, how dark it is around the eyes? And the snout is light and you see this has the same color around the eyes that it does at the snout. In this case, uh, you know, people have sequenced chimps from the different um, low, subspecies in the different locations in Africa. And when we ran these sequences, we had 100% matches. All eight matched up perfectly to known populations of chimpanzees. We had three from, you know, east of the Uelubangi. We had three that were West Africa, that would mean from Guinea, Liberia, Ivory Coast, or Sierra Leone. 
And the other two that we had were definitely from Cameroon, Nigeria area. In fact, it, it, you know, it, it's not, you know, we, our, our judicial system convicts people with a lot less DNA evidence than that. Shanghai, the mega city on China's east coast, is a symbol and warning of an exploding economy. It's not just goods that are traded here. Animals are too. It's Aman's last stop on his search for the lost eight chimps. He first just finds a single male. The enclosure is spartan. There are no toys, no ropes, nothing. The surprise awaits behind the scenes. Karl Amann is speechless, and not just because it's stuffy in here. So where do they come from? Karl Amann has no doubts. They're two of the eight chimps from Guinea. The age and appearance fit perfectly. He has seen enough. He has found more than 20 West African chimpanzees in China. He sets off for Thailand. CITES, the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species, is convening in Bangkok. This costs the taxpayer several million dollars, but the results are often sobering. At least Karl Amann gets some good news right at the start. For the time being, Guinea will be excluded entirely from any trade in animals. A serious punishment with economic consequences. But the importer, China, isn't mentioned once. That six of the eight chimps from Guinea are still lost in China is also because of the CITES information policy. Karl Amann isn't given access to crucial documents. So far, the Chinese have evidently been pursuing purely commercial purposes with the import of chimps, a clear breach of the treaty's trade restrictions. But the press officer of CITES tries to smooth over the situation. China is a big country, big economy. I don't think that the, probably the power of the zoos is that big to, to make them. It's the animal dealers, the same, the, the same dealers. If the problems are the animal dealers, are, there are national laws in China, there are national laws in the exporting countries that should be applied. But the practice is often different. Often there are bribes so that forged papers are given official stamps. During the talk with the delegates from Guinea, Karl Amman realizes that nothing has changed. Quite the opposite. Monsieur Dumbayou may not be the head of CITES in Guinea anymore, but his successor is suspected of being massively involved in the illegal trade with animals. Guinea is suspended, but China is spared. Grace de Gabriel from China works for an international animal protection organization. Aman's experiences with her fellow countrymen don't surprise her. You have been what, what Chinese would call being, you're like a, a ball that's being kicked around by different government agencies. And I think, you know, it, it, you're, you're not going to get um, an answer, a, a clear answer um, from government agencies. Will China become a threat to global biodiversity? Economic interests seem more important in China than species protection. The business with exotic animals seems to be going well. And China need to weigh, weigh that itself and decide, do we want to be a leader? Do we want to project a goodwill to the world that we care about the environment, we care about the, the heritage of the world? Or do we want to just drive every, everyone to extinction? Karl Amann is demanding more pressure on China. But instead, the country is officially praised by CITES for its efforts in species conservation. There are approaches to a solution. Article 8 of the Convention demands the punishment of the perpetrators, the confiscation of the illegally traded animals, and their repatriation to their original country in the event of a breach. 
the victims of the animal mafia have a place of refuge in the Takaguma Reserve near Freetown. Bala Amarase Karan runs the reserve in the jungle. More than a hundred chimps live here in safety. What other people think. When we spotted a single chimp with the first Chinese, we thought that is where we need to stop before this problem getting in, out of hand. Do. So basically the chimps here, they are serving as ambassadors for the rest of them that are in the wild. Other animal protection groups also want as many chimps as possible to return to Africa. There's room here and elsewhere. New facilities with lots of jobs for the local population could be created. But as long as economic interests override species conservation, the situation won't change. And CITES doesn't seem to have the political will to set a clear sign. As a result, Karl Amann's appraisal of his odyssey exploring the ape trade is dire. Once again, the illegal animal dealers in Guinea and their middlemen aren't getting arrested. The chimps are left in the Chinese zoos in safari parks, even though they were demonstrably caught illegally in the wild, instead of being captivity bred. The CITES office is still refusing insights into crucial documents. Come on, Lucy. Lucy. Woo. Woo, woo, woo. Although Guinea has been suspended, dealers are still offering apes for sale with official papers. What about China? It sends the succinct message that a return of the imported apes will not take place. The two chimps Aman found won't go back to Guinea either. After finishing filming, Karl Amann learned that another four chimps were exported to China, allegedly completely legally. This time they were from Sierra Leone, one of Guinea's neighbors. Three of the chimps were declared as having been wild cord. According to the statutes of the Convention on the International Trade in Endangered Species, these animals are highly protected. That the apes can still be traded is a slap in the face for the states that have signed up to CITES.